for coming in this number. <laughs> um, my name is Kosta Milenkovic. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure to address you today, a uh, few of you. And uh, I will speak about uh, MSG IOTA and actually how it is done through SAP HANA XSA. Uh, so I work, I come from uh, Belgrade office, uh, I work at uh, DevLabs department and uh, DevLabs is uh, mainly focused on development and uh, MSG IOTA uh, is a, a project that we have uh, worked in recent years. I have worked on that uh, project for last uh, last three years and I would like to share some experiences and insights about SAP HANA XSA and how does it uh, look like working on it. So um, have you heard about SAP HANA XSA or no? Yes? No? So and so? Okay, they, then great. Mm? Okay. So presentation consists of three parts. So first is a short explanation, what is MSG IOTA, uh, the project that we do. Second is why we have chose SAP HANA and SAP HANA XSA uh, to be um, as our development stack. And the third thing is what could go wrong. So what are some um, issues and some typical issues and tips and tricks uh, how to deal with SAP HANA and SAP HANA XSA. So what is MSG IOT? Uh, IOTA stands for, it's abbreviation, and it stands for Internet of Things Analyzer. So what we do is uh, we, collect, uh, uh, we collect data from various uh, sources, uh, mostly devices, for example, from uh, cars, uh, drones. We have even a, a fitness tracker uh, scenario. So we collect data from various sources and uh, except devices, uh, uh, you can connect uh, data from other systems that already have uh, some, uh, some data present, so just to provide them to IOTA. So we co uh, collect data, uh, then process it, so we calculate some score. For example, in a telematics scenario, so if you have a device in your car, we can tell how a uh, bad driver you are. So. Uh, and after that, we can integrate uh, our solution and our score to some other systems, for example, policy management or, some, uh, or anything, any other system you need. So uh, here is a fu functional picture of MSG IOTA. So we have, uh, four, uh, we have uh, four functional modules. First one is source that I already uh, had explained. So uh, we can connect da uh, collect data from drone, uh, telematics, from car, uh, and uh, other systems and uh, fitness trackers. After we uh, collect data, so we receive data in source parts, we receive data in various uh, formats. So we always have to adapt this uh, format to one unique uh, format that is used uh, by IOTA. Uh, by, by our system. So that's the, that's the role of uh, source integration module. And in this part, uh, we have uh, uh, one, one part is for uh, live streaming of data. So for example, if a uh, car continually, continuously sends data, and the uh, other is a general, uh, general transfer module. So uh, in that, you can in integrate uh, other system with the present data to IOTA. So once we have sent data to source, uh, receive it here in source integration part, at this moment uh, we have all the data in one unique format, uh, IoT format, and uh, after we have it, we can process it further. So I will, in this processing part, uh, describe telematics scenario. So um, how does it go in telematics? Uh, we have a car that sends data, and uh, for example, uh, you turn on your car, you drive, you send data, but uh, from your device, uh, from onboard unit in your car, you have only uh, a small set of data. 
So you have, uh, for example, latitude, longitude, speed, um, acceleration uh, uh, on all axes, but uh, you don't have uh, anything more than that. And um, to make this data more useful and more informative, we have integration with here maps. So uh, this uh, here maps uh, uh, module is used for trip enrichment. So now we have a uh, data. We can uh, we can say um, uh, we can add some additional attributes such as uh, uh, such as speed limit. So if you have speed and spin limit, you can get uh, you can get uh, speeding, which is more useful than speed itself. So here maps provide us uh, more than 100 attributes additional to these 20 we received to cars. So uh, we have a, a much more, uh, much uh, richer uh, model. Uh, here also have live traffic, um, road types, trains, a uh, lot, lot of them, and also can fix our route if uh, our device uh, uh, shows some deviation. So that's the role of here. And after that comes the scoring engine model. And in scoring engine, uh, you can uh, calculate the, uh, uh, you can have a, create a model. And uh, in that model, uh, that's uh, basically a mathematical formula created by actors or data scientists. And um, in this formula that you have previously created, uh, you can calculate a trip and assign a score to a trip. So scoring engine has uh, more functionalities than that, but the basic functionality is uh, trip or some col collection calculation. Uh, now we are at this point. We have calculated, we have received our score, calculated it, and we want to, uh, to integrate it further and send it to other system. So uh, we have integration with policy management. So uh, you can assign the, to, you can uh, link devices and uh, and contracts, which is very important. Uh, so so you know which contract has uh, which score. Uh, you can uh, create test and test your uh, calculation model in scoring engine. You can have a, a various statistic uh, statistics on the trips and uh, and data you have received. And you can provide it to some other system. So once you have uh, done with processing in IOTA, maybe you want to send data to some else, uh, some else medium, for example, for machine learning or uh, other analysis and tests. Uh, so that, that is IOTA in short terms. So uh, as I said, this is a presentation about SAP HANA XSA, not IOTA. So um, what were the challenges uh, we had and requirements uh, we had to build such solution? So the first uh, thing is uh, survive the load. So if you have su uh, such a system that, uh, a big data system that has machine to machine communication, uh, you will definitely face with a uh, high load and, uh, and uh, there will be a lot of data uh, to process. Uh, second thing is uh, stay on premise. So by that, um, uh, we wanted to be flexible so that we could deploy our solution on premise and on cloud, uh, depending how our client wants. And the third thing is uh, stay blue. So by that, I mean we wanted to... Uh, uh, SCP is our biggest partner, MSG biggest partner, and uh, our business is highly dependent on them, so we wanted to stay in their ecosystem. Uh, we wanted to have easy integration with other systems. We wanted to be flexible. We wanted to have a modern application <coughs> server that can... Uh, build, uh, that can uh, deploy apps, uh, Java or Spring, some framework, uh, uh, Node.js, Angular. So to have a modern uh, server, not to use um, something old. And we wanted to have efficient lifecycle management. So we wanted uh, complete continuous integration and continuous development uh, deployment uh, infrastructure. 
and uh, to easily uh, go from code to production. So that, that for the requirements and challenges, and this is a short wrap up uh, about this was the first part. And uh, now I will, uh, I will go to SAP HANA and SAP HANA XSA. So how, we, uh, how SAP HANA XSA solves this for us. So SAP HANA XSA is advanced or modern application server with support for all these languages that I already had said. And SAP HANA XSA is built on top of uh, SAP HANA. XSA stands for Extended Services uh, Advanced. So before it was only Extended Services, but now they added this one letter and many functionalities to it. So with SAP HANA, we have a uh, very fast in-memory computing platform, large and stable in-memory database, which provide us uh, surviving the load, the first challenge. Uh, it's per perfect for aggregation and analytics. Uh, with SAP HANA, you can easily uh, deal with a lot of data and uh, pull aggregations uh, and uh, do aggregations, analytics on them. And uh, that was the part of HANA. And with HANA XSA, we have the uh, other requirements uh, met. So uh, it's also uh, SAP HANA XSA uh, supports container uh, technology. So with that, we can easily uh, wrap up IOTA in one box and uh, deploy it uh, on any SAP HANA XSA server or any other cloud server. So with SAP HANA, it's based on Cloud, cloud Foundry, which uh, has a support, for example, for Docker. And uh, with that, it's really easy to deploy your solution, which uh, has many modules, uh, on from one SAP HANA XSA to the other. Uh, also, SAP HANA XSA uh, supports and uh, is perfect for microservice architecture and um, has a great integration with other SAP HANA and SAP HANA XSA services. I'll mention that later more about that. And it is uh, really easy to migrate from SAP HANA XSA that can be on-premise to cloud. So you have one uh, descriptor file, and from that you can, with uh, just a small twitch in these files, you can uh, send it to cloud. Um, so how does SAP HANA XSA landscape look like? So to repeat again, it's application server that is built on top of SAP HANA. So uh, it has integration with services uh, that are um, SAP HANA, user authentication and authorization, which is, which is security service, file system, and job scheduler. So with uh, this service broker, you can easily just select services you need uh, and uh, all add them in one container that, that is a box that, that is isolated and contains everything you need uh, for your solutions. So whole IOTA fits into one container and then you can ship it uh, wherever you want. Um, so it has Node.js runtime, Tomcat runtime, it has uh, many application, many services, it has web router that uh, deals for all communication from and, uh, and uh, to uh, container. So all the communication goes to router, which, uh, which is good because at one point you have communication and you can secure it with your service and you don't have uh, multiple points of uh, entrance. So that's for security very, very uh, good. And the third thing is on one XSA server, uh, you can uh, build multiple organization in multiple spaces. So uh, that means you can virtually divide uh, your, uh, your system into and have a quality analysis service, development uh, server, and uh, production server all on, one, uh, all on one SAP HANA XSA. They are completely virtually divided. Uh, okay. And this is a picture how IOTA looks like on SAP HANA XSA. So we have our services, we have our runtime, we have our, our Java applications, microservices, 
that are all, all linked and uh, they're, being, uh, they're built on Spring and this UI is built on Angular. So you can uh, choose a framework you like to work on. We have our router that is secured and uh, all the communication from external uh, parts go through this point. So it really, you really can build uh, modern systems with SAP HANA XSA. Um, and the services I described uh, before are actually basic services that go with uh, SAP HANA XSA. If you go cloud, you have uh, many more uh, services. You have uh, no SQL databases, you have relational databases, you have in-cache memory databases, you have queues, uh, you can scale your applications, you can also manage a API and uh, many more. And also, you have easy integration with SAP Smart, SAP Internet of Things, SAP IAT, and SAP Leonardo. So it's really, really great for integrating with other modules. And this is a short uh, wrap up about SAP HANA XSA. So this is, uh, what's the time, how much? 28 has passed or left? Left, left. okay. With Q&A. Uh, okay, okay, great. Then we are on time. So this is a wrap up. And what really important is to remember, it's advanced application server that can provide you anything uh, that is uh, 2018. So it's really good. And the third part is um, I would uh, like to share uh, some uh, typical errors and issues you face if you use SAP HANA and SAP HANA XSA. So first things first is read the manual. Uh, this is actually a holy grail of development because if you are uh, very patient and good at reading the manual, you'll probably be a good developer. So most of problems uh, come from the thing that you don't read good manual. Uh, it happens to everyone, an experienced and an unexperienced one. And especially if you have SAP manuals, you will be less likely to read it. Uh, well, so the first what could go wrong uh, with SAP HANA and SAP HANA XSA, if you build IOTA, is resource competing. So we said SAP HANA XSA is built on top of SAP HANA. So what happens uh, is that they uh, can be and usually are deployed on single server. And now we have these two things competing for so for same resources and uh, CPU and memory, uh, just like in this picture. And what happens is a crash or congestion. So they cannot pass through the same uh, path. And how to uh, how to deal with this? First tip is use the power of SAP HANA whenever it is possible. So SAP HANA XSA gives you great flexibility in uh, developing application, as we already said, but SAP HANA uh, has the power. So whatever you can do in SAP HANA. So all the aggregations uh, on large set of data and everything, do it on SAP HANA. It's the best player in the team, use it. So it's very fast and it works very, uh, great for situations like this. Second tip uh, is uh, scale out. So if you have a single server, uh, what will happen uh, as the more data uh, gets into your system, you will probably end up scaling up, uh, which means on same server, you will add more resources. So you will start with 32 gigabyte server, then you will uh, you will go to 64 gigabyte server, and then you will get, go to 128 gigabyte server. And, but this cannot go forever. Uh, and the price tax gets uh, exponentially goes if you scale up. So the better thing is 
to scale out. So, and by SAP Cloud Platform, you can do that. So you can uh, split your solution to, uh, you can deploy your solution to SAP Cloud and split uh, on different physical servers all your parts. So go from a single server to cloud. That's, that's one very good uh, solution. And the third tip is, okay, uh, there are things that you cannot do with SAP HANA and uh, you have to do with your SAP HANA XSA, actually with your application. So for example, in IOTA was communication with here. So um, uh, you cannot uh, that easily integrate here and have a REST communication uh, through SQL. I think you cannot at all. So you have to build it uh, uh, in your application. And if you do that, uh, make sure that you don't hold too much uh, data in your application memory. So once, uh, so store it in database and pull uh, the data one by one. So go one by one trip and then uh, enrich it and store it back. Don't uh, overload your application memory because eventually it will crash. Uh, what could go wrong too? Uh, overload. So this one is specific for SAP HANA, not SAP HANA XSA. So in SAP HANA, uh, uh, space, um, so your in-memory space is divided in two parts. First is storage space, second is operational space. And um, you must really take care of this ratio because uh, the more data that goes in, for example, you have 32 gigabyte server and you have 16 gigabytes of storage space and that means that 16 gigabytes is left for operational space. So which means if you do aggregation on a complete data set, you will have your in-memory full and everything after that will go uh, very slow. Uh, SAP HANA will become, become slower, it will congest and it will also eventually crash. And um, that's, that's the scenario. First tip is um, divide and conquer. So uh, don't do large aggregations on complete data set. So uh, do aggregation step by step if possible. So we had a problem, for example, we had a lot of trips and we wanted to pull statistics uh, for every trip to compare it with other trips. I mean, that was an insane idea, but we had it. And that was, uh, that was a typical this scenario. So we, for every trip, we did aggregation on complete, on complete uh, data set. And that cannot, uh, that cannot work simply. So don't do these things on SAP HANA. It is super powerful, but it will not survive these this ideas. And if you have to do such large aggregations, it's better uh, to, have, um, uh, to uh, put it on some other system and then to perform uh, analytics. Or, and besides that, if you have uh, the data that you don't need or require anymore, archive it. So once you have done processing for uh, some trips, for example, one month old, uh, archive them and st uh, store them to the slower medium. And what could go wrong tree if SAP HANA crashes? So what happens uh, then? If you do so, uh, some of bad things I described earlier, your SAP HANA will crash. And if SAP HANA crashes, don't forget uh, that uh, about, so SAP HANA crashes, uh, the complete server, and also SAP HANA XSA crashes. So be careful that everything that you have in your application memory, you checkpoint and store to relational data bills fr frequently. Because uh, once the, <coughs> uh, once the, uh, because, uh, yes, no, th this is important actually. 
So do all the operations in transactions. So if you pull data from SAP HANA to application memory, be sure that this operation is a transaction. So uh, if you have a, so don't pull it from one part of HANA to the other until the operation is complete. So that's very important. Do operations in transactions and uh, always uh, uh, migrate data from one ch checkpoint to the other. And the, third, and the second tip is the general one and the most important one, and the one that if one this fails, everything is everything goes bad. And we all know that we need to have backups, but frequently it happens that we doesn't. So check your backup infrastructure, and SAP HANA also has some issues. So what if you change your data model and have a new deployment, and by that you cannot restore uh, the, the, the data, the backup to this new data model. So take care of your backup infrastructure because SAP HANA is still in memory and uh, it can crash. And the uh, wrap up of the third part is uh, all of this. I will, I will just emphasize the third one is only if you're aware of limitations, uh, these two can work at their maximum capacity. So it goes with uh, read the manual, but um, if you don't use it well, it can really be a painful thing to develop in SAP HANA and SAP HANA XSA. They're great tools, but read the manual and be aware of limitations, and everything will go well. Uh, I would also like to uh, give credit uh, to my team. Uh, unfortunately, not all of them provide me the photo, so I put them some default photo. Uh, they are, uh, they, these are not the twins, actually. Um, uh, they are great guys, and uh, we are working very well. It's a pleasure to work with them. Um, at the end, if you want to know anything more about MSG IOTA, if you uh, need some help about SAP HANA XSA or have some question, if you have some interesting idea or want to collaborate with us, if you uh, think that uh, you have some idea that uh, could have something with IOTA, uh, please contact us. And also, if you're feeling sad and lonely, please contact us also, and for any other reason. Uh, that was basically all. Uh, are there any questions? and answers, or I should question you. <laughs> you have. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I know that uh, you guys used the MSG IOT as a back, uh, back end solution for uh, Sina mm -hmm. and Duna. Do you know the status of this? How is how, how did uh, About end? back end solution for? The project um, for Sina and Duna, you had a like, uh, MSG IOT in the back end and mm -hmm. a mobile app in the front end, you know? Yes. Um, uh, so I don't know actually what's the current status with that client, but uh, uh, that was the initial version. So Fayata had a mobile uh, that my mile application, and oh, we, yes, we send data through this application and uh, then do all the rest. Uh, I don't think uh, it's a live thing now. Uh, we have a new new customer now, and uh, we have. Um, actually removed this uh, mile mile scenario, we only go through devices, onboard units, because uh, application is not uh, the fit uh, for that. You cannot, uh, it's, it's, uh, it has many issues. So we go now with devices, and we will uh, bin build the front end and so on on mobiles. But uh, we have, uh, actually, IOTA is live now, we have uh, one client, and uh, it's going very well, but we stick to devices. And for that client, uh, uh, honestly, I don't know uh, what, what happened with that, but uh, if, if you're interested, please ask me my email and then I will ask someone. No, it was very, very, yes. very interesting use case, mm -hmm. I think, uh, regarding uh, yeah, uh, 
in the in, in the direction with the loyalty. I mean, yes, drive, yes. If you drive very safe, or if you if you are very not using mobile phone, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you get you get points, or that you can you can get a yeah a cheaper uh, insurance. Yes, company. yes. Uh, that's the still the scenario we have. So we. Uh, we still still have loyalty service ex as external service, so not not as a core IATA, and in that uh, loyalty, uh, so except policy integration with policy management system, we have integration with loyalty that uh, can give you awards and so on based on how good driver you are. Also, this loyalty is um, something we also develop for fitness and uh, for uh, drones. So that's uh, that's that's still going on. Okay, uh, no more questions, questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much, that was all. Um, I hope it was interesting, or at least not boring, and we can go all out now. <laughs>